What's up guys, Mark here from VIP Shop Management. Today I just wanna give you an update on VIP Shop Management 5G, uh, give you the timeline, when it's gonna be ready, and what is it gonna look like, and so let's get to it. So the VIP Shop Management 5 generation, 5th generation, it's not like the 4th and the 3rd and any of those. And the reason why is because uh, on the 4th generation we finally hit like as the ceiling what i mean by that when it comes to database design we hit the ceiling where we could not add any more we just need to re restructure everything and start from fresh and what i mean by start from fresh not start from fresh you know like not use everything of course we have a nice concept but we need it to reconstruct it from start so it's like we're building a house uh, we had to do, like when i said we're going on a <laughs> destruction mode and start over that's what we did we just build a database that can handle uh right now and can handle the future and can handle the cloud and uh, and it's beautiful like now the database because at first we didn't know what else is going on like you know it was designed for my shop and then after that we know it was it, there's like over a thousand customer uh across the country and canada are using it so we, we learned so much over the years, the requirement, always, I always talk about the requirement more than anything. What is it required from, from tire taxes, uh, to sublet, to parts, to labor, to taxes, parts and labor. There's so much going on. It's not that simple um, to create an invoicing system for auto repair shops. I don't know why is it so regulated, but it is what it is. So anyway, so we, what I did pretty much, I reached, I always talk about we because that's been, it is becoming we at the end of the year. Um, probably, I will probably, I always try to make videos. I like to be involved as much, as long as I'm in a company. Um, so, um, like I said, we, we restructured everything. It looks better now. If you look up here, let's start, with, let's start talking about it. So if you look up here right now, it says your customer request in the front, which is the always bugged me before that the customer request in the back. Because when you create an, an estimate, um, the first thing you want to say, why are you here for? So and then you, you were before you had to click on labor and write it down. You don't have to anymore. It's right here on the front. So let's create an estimate and talk about it real, uh, real quick. So the first thing you can still do the new customer, existing customer. But I think most people are going to be going with the quick estimate. The quick estimate is going to give you the ability to create an estimate and you can add a customer right away or you can add a customer later. Or you can add a vehicle, whatever you want to do. So let's check it out. We're going to click on quick estimate. Now you have two nice box. Let's say I want to search for Mark. I search for Mark is right there. I just press enter. It's going to select the cars right away automatically. I'm just going to select the focus. And just like that, I created an estimate. And I created, uh, I added the customer and I added the vehicle. It's in a beautiful way. Customer request is already right here. Let's say he said, check the front brakes, front brakes, which is really beautiful. Um, um, if you want to go check out the backside, which is this for the labor, you're going to have recommendation, warranty. It's going to be expanded. A lot of people, they want it warranty to be expanded. So warranty is going to be all of them. I think it's going to be a thousand character each. Um, the note, we added the note back. We, we, we heard that the note was really important because we had the note before. Uh, sometimes you just want to add the note. And what's the beautiful about the, the printing of the invoice is if I didn't write note, so there is not going to be a note section. If I didn't write um, warranty, it's not going to be warranty section, which is really any of these, you, if you keep it empty, it's not going to print anything. And whatever you type in, it's going to be divided. Our invoice already, you know, exceeds not even close shop monkey or or any old data not even their invoicing uh, the way it looks our invoice is way more professional and it's going to get way more professional let's talk about fees real quick that was something that we didn't have before if i want to add a fee whether it's a smog test fee or a diagnosis fee whatever the case is what we do is right now we just click on labor right here and click on fee and say you know what i want to do a smog test fee and it's let's say fifty dollars and i click add notice what happened right here what happened right here there is the fee it did not go under parts or tires or labor or sublet it, it went under fees because fees has nothing to do with parts and labor and that's something that we were struggling uh with with the fourth generation and anything before this fifth generation so fee is already there 
Um, uh, sublet, same thing. It's going to be under sublet right here, which is really important. And um, so that's the front part, the rear part. The front, you can add tire. If you want to add tire separately, um, in different some state they want the tire to be separately. Uh, you can do so. If not, it's going to be just part. Diagnosis right here. Internal note. We added internal note. This is internal note. It's not going to be printed on the invoice. This is just for you. And there's so, a lot of times I've noticed that you needed uh, to add some notes about this estimate. Hey, you know the clutch was uh, burned out. You can do so. So it's really important. That's not going to print. So let's say you know the clutch clutch was burned out. So you can do so. So look how, how easy to navigate between the diagnosis and the, and the internal note. You see, Windows does not provide us much with the tools uh, to create a beautiful uh, stuff uh, uh, like the web. Right now, the web application there's a, there's a tool that you can create a beautiful stuff. So I didn't have, I had no choice but create my own tools like something like that. That's my creation. It has nothing to do with Windows. You cannot find this on Windows. I created my own tool. And if you go back to that, look at it. It's beautiful, easy to navigate. It has an arrow so you know where you're at. Uh, you're never going to mess it up. So that's really, really good. The status is going to be in the middle. I am not done with the status. So I'm not going to click on it. New quote, place orders right here. Um, uh, look how easy now to, let's say I want to edit basic all change. Check this out. So if I click on basic all change, it's going to fill it up like the way it used to. If I want to edit this basic all change, that button, how do you edit the, the the presets on your radio? You press and hold, and I was like, that's why I'm bringing uh, the, this old technology to the to VIP shop manager. Now, if I want to edit this button, I just want to press and hold. So you press and hold now, and it opens it up, and you, it brings you straight to here. So if I say if I want to call it an old change, and I click save and exit, guess what? I have? Look at it. instantly, it's changed to old change, which is really beautiful. Um, and you, you can do any one of these or you can even press and hold on it and then um, you know just change you just come in here and change any one of those and the beautiful thing about it before it used to be only three parts and only th uh, three labors not anymore you can make him parts labor or fee so you can if you if you charge a smog test or a diagnosis fee you can add it right here and it's gonna come up as a fee um what else i want to talk so let's continue let's, let's see you you've noticed right here at the bottom there's something called authorized but before i want to talk about this let's talk about the workflow has changed too let's go there so the workflow is completely changed right now it's it's divided into in progress estimate dropped off estimate what's the dropped off estimate if a, if a customer came in and says i'm not going to drop my car off i don't need you to work on it till next week take your time I don't want it to be right here. I want it to be separate. Now when I know I have time on this car, which is really beautiful. So you have in progress estimate, the estimate you're just working on right now. You're going to have dropped off estimate. You're going to have in progress invoices, in progress invoices. You're going to have completed invoices, the one that ready for payment. You're going to have fleet statements right here and you're going to have fleet statement paid. We're gonna talk about these. Those had like has received a major upgrade. I think we're gonna be the leading uh, company when it comes to fleet because that's fleet. I hated fleet at first, but I've noticed almost every shop does fleet, and there's so much money in it. That's why customers, uh, my my customer need the fleet account and fleet statements and an ability to do so. But we had so many. I created it before. Uh, just a quick creation to solve a problem. Now it's really been built uh, in a way I'll show you in a second. So let's go back on in progress estimate. We're going to click on uh, mark right here. Notice there's no more flickering too. Before there was so much flickering every time you, you switch from a window to a window. Not anymore. There's no more flickering whatsoever. Uh, let's do it again. If you click on it, it just comes in as one page, which is really beautiful. Anyway, assume that we're going to let's cash this customer out. So we're going to click on authorize. You see, every time you start an estimate, you start an estimate, you build it up, basic all change, and then after that, you need to authorize it. See, the law required on every state that I've known, the law required that the customer need to authorize um, this, the estimate before you charge him money. 
And that's a huge problem that most of the mechanics and our repair shop are not doing so because first of all, it's really pain in the ass. And second of all, they really, if you follow any of these, uh, let's say shop monkey or all data, it's really a pain in the ass. And, and, and really all what the government's saying, hey, we just need to make sure he approved it. That's all, that's it. So we made it really amazing. We made an amazing system right now saying, hey, when you start an estimate, we're gonna have a button, it's called authorized. Once the estimate is being authorized, now it becomes an invoice. I don't need an invoice that is not authorized. Estimates, it's, you're gonna always delete, delete and add estimates as much as you want. But the moment you authorize the estimate, the estimate becomes invoice. And I don't want to be like Mitchell one where they have repair order, estimate, invoice. Now everybody's confused. No, 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 no. You, you start with an estimate. If the customer approves it, it becomes an invoice. Let the computer handle this stuff and let you do your job. And basically that's exactly what's happening. Once the estimate is being is approved, it becomes an invoice, unpaid invoice, whether it's in progress whether it's completed and ready for checkout. That's it. In progress, ready for checkout. But it's an estimate first. Let's go ahead and authorize. How do you authorize it? We're just gonna click on authorize right here. And it's gonna give you the option. The first, it's already selected the first option, which is the most common option. The customer is in front of you. He just need an all change. And in any authorization, every state, they require the name of the authorized person because sometimes it could be the parent, so that's why. But usually the, the program is so smart and it's, it's giving you the easy option automatically. And what I mean by that, the most common way of authorization is the customer is there or the customer is by email nowadays with what's going on. But usually it's the same customer. So it, it will select automatically for you the name. It's going to select automatically for you the phone number. It's going to select automatically for you the date and time. If this customer wasn't there and he authorized it by email, just click on email and click authorize. Look what happens right here when you authorize it. Once you authorize it, it's an invoice now. Now we're dealing with an invoice, which is really cool. Check it out. Let's go back in here. It's not here anymore. It's under in progress invoices. It's right here. And it gives you an invoice number. Front, sorry. It gives you an invoice number. And not just that, it switches to make a payment too, right there. Before we had our payment system was really confusing. Again, because the database was holding me from improving it like this. It was impossible to create it. Unless I recreated the database, it was impossible to make it. Each invoice have the ability to make multiple payments. Now you will have the ability to make multiple payments, not just that, on an invoice number, not on an estimate number. Now check it out. I assume I wanna make a payment for this, just $10. I click on cash, I type in $10. right here, sorry. I type in $10 and I click pay and I print. You look right here, so we're gonna have a payment right here, we're gonna have a balance due right here. Let's go back to in progress. Look under in progress estimate, now we have total. Under in progress invoices, we have total and we have balance due, which is beautiful. Let's click back and again. So if I wanna make a payment and pay in full, I'm gonna click make a payment. It's automatically going to add the number for you. It doesn't matter if I click on credit card, visa, last four digit, authorization code, and click on pay and print. Now what happens, the invoice, it, once the balance due is zero, the invoice will automatically close and go to the daily report. If I want to open, what if I, what if I made a mistake, which is, this is the kind of stuff that we had before. What if I made a mistake? Oh my God, I forget to change because now it's closed invoice. I cannot change anything. What do I do? You have a menu now, menu right here. Just click on menu and say edit invoice. So the status switch automatically to editing, check breaks and rear pads. What if I added another thing? I added, let's say tire rotation. 
or tires not in balance. Now look what happens. It switched back to make a payment. So the 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 VIP shop, this is my best of the best, and it's really smart right now. It's gonna track every move that you make with giving you all the option that you need. Say if I want to make a payment. Now the invoice switch back, not just to open editing, now it switch back to make a payment. So let's make a payment, let's close it, make the payment and close it. Now it's closed. It's closed invoice. If I want to edit it back again, I can. If I want to avoid it, I can. If I want to refund it, I can. So you're gonna have, and you're gonna have a different menu for an estimate, for an invoice, for a closed invoice. Which is really, really beautiful. Let's talk about another thing. Let's select another customer. And we're gonna talk this one, this example, we're gonna talk about a fleet account. What happened to fleet account? Quick estimate, again, fleet account, VIP auto repair. We selected a car. And let's say, you see there's a bar right now with a green button. Let me tell you what's that. That's the rating for the customer. Like, let's click on edit. Right here, see his five star. If I want to make, if I want to make this customer, you think Shop Monkey is gonna understand what are we doing here? <laughs> you need somebody in the business to understand why do I need to rate a customer, even though we make money out of all customers. But some customers are headaches, and some customers are just nice people. So if this customer is a headache. Just give him one star. What happens when you give him one star? Look at the bar, it changes to red. We had a star before, I thought it was an ugly star. We didn't want that. No, I want it. If somebody came and see the red bar right there, he wouldn't understand what that mean. He think it's part of the software. We don't want to put a star there. Let's go back and edit. And let's say he's a three, three stars customer. Just because somebody is one star, that doesn't mean he can upgrade. I've had customers that were one star and all of a sudden they become five, five star. Sometimes they just not in a situation or going through rough time. So don't ever give up on anybody. Three stars. It's an orange. Five stars. It's green, bright green. She's beautiful. I was showing it to my daughter and she loved it. She's like, oh, that's beautiful, dad. So that's really cool. All right. Anyway, so let's talk about fleet account. We're going to do a full service all change in the fleet account. We're going to authorize it. It's gonna pick up the name. You can change all of this if you want, or just click authorize. And bear in mind, the authorization, you will have the option to print it on the invoice, or if you don't want it, we'll give you the option not to print it on the invoice. So it's up to you on that. We're gonna click on uh, pay invoice. Look, this customer, he's not a regular customer. This customer is a fleet account. Let's close it again, and let's edit just to make sure. So all your fleet account, if you click on more options right here, he is the fleet account and he is tax exempt. We're going to talk about that later. And I know it's been charged tax, but it's, we're not there yet. But anyway, we're going to click on pay invoice. If he's a fleet account, you have two options now. You have an option to pay the invoice right now. If he's just right there and you just want to pay, and pay it right now, or you can post it to a statement. Let's say we want to post it to a statement. We're going to click on post to a statement. Look what happens right here instantly. The program is going to give you how much this person owes right now. How many invoices are in there right now for him? What's his current balance and the new invoice total? We're going to click confirm. That's his new total and that's his new balance. We're going to print. And let's go back to the workflow. We call it workflow right now. We, we took the in progress away from it. And we're going to go to fleet statements. And that's his account right here. It's VIP auto repair. His grand total is 530. His current balance is $530. Let's click on it and see what happens. When you click on it, it's going to view all the invoices automatically. We changed all the weird flow that we had. We didn't want that. We just want to click on it and show me the invoices. And I want to know how much he owes us right there, $530. And look right here. You have a status for each invoice right now. Unpaid, 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 which is beautiful. Unpaid, unpaid, unpaid. And you can view the payments too. We're going to talk about that. So let's click on make a payment. Let's say the customer want to make a $100 payment.
payment by check and click on pay look what happened when what happened right now so the the payment we we don't want to hold the payments anymore we don't want that we want the, we want to apply the payment to the invoice that's a problem we had before I, I was hearing this complaint not just from you guys from the other end from your fleet account you said we just made a payment and I still see none of these invoices are paid yet I made a hundred dollar payment or a thousand dollar payment not anymore when when a customer make a payment, obviously he he most of the time he's not gonna make a payment based on the amount. He's just gonna give you a hundred bucks or a thousand dollars. He's gonna pay him full. So what happened right now? We're gonna apply this payment to the invoices. If you look on the side right here, it's gonna say paid. So this invoice is paid in full and has been posted to the daily report. Not just that, there was some change left. We applied the change. To the other invoice which is really beautiful look at it this invoice already closed right there let's make another payment let's make a payment for four hundred dollars cash pay and look at it look what happened here it's already paid the second one is paid and this one is partially paid if I want to view the payment, just click view payments right there. Or if I want to delete any of these payments, you can too. If I delete, let's see what happens if I delete the $400 payment. If I made a mistake, I don't want you to delete unless you made a mistake. And I'm going to put a password there, by the way. Confirm. Look what happened right now. It took the payment away from the invoice. Reopen this invoice for you. We went back to the partially paid. Let's pay it in full. Let's see what happens if we pay it in full. Cash. We're going to pay the whole balance. All paid. Beautifully. So that's how the new VIP shop management workflow looks like. All right, let's talk about when it's going to be ready because everybody's ancient. Ancient. This is not an upgrade. This is a new creation of VIP shop management. And this is VIP. This is the new generation of VIP shop management. It's gonna put us on the map, cloud capable, um, database that rub, robust database that can handle anything. Um, it's gonna uh, handle multiple shops at the same time. Um, uh, it's gonna handle once we put it on the cloud. If you know, if you're not on the cloud, it doesn't matter. You still have all these options anyway. But for the for the new customers who want to come in and they want the cloud version of it. It's going to have capability of crazy capability, including an application on a tablet where you take a picture or take a video and upload it to the cloud. And it's going to be always connected to this. That's one of the that's one of the cool things. Another thing, we're going to add a web application that works behind the scene. If you want to go and check out your reports anywhere uh, in the world, if you own a shop and you just want to see how your shop is doing, just see the report, daily report. We're going to have a dashboard right here. It's not there yet. It's coming up soon. On um, timeline, I said the timeline. Let's talk about the timeline. 11, 24. It's my birthday. That's my, 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 my daughter's birthday. It's going to be out in 11, 24, which is less than 30 days. It will be out. We're not going to push it anymore. I'm putting all my power uh, to finish it by then. But we are at 50%. The first 50% it was hell. I've been working on it since September 12th. Uh, look at it. Usually I create an update and release it right away. <laughs> not in this time because that was not an update. Um, it, this is like beyond any update. This is it. Uh, this is made from shop owners to shop owners. Um, not just from guy. I, I've seen some people. <laughs> Some it, literally, I've seen some uh, shop uh, shop management. Uh, you know, was created by shop owner. Not in the, not the same way. I'm not like you. This is was created from a programmer shop owner. To someone, uh, if you were a shop owner, you went and hired a bunch of guys uh, to create an invoice system, and you bring in your knowledge. Not VIP shop manager. VIP shop management was created from a shop owner programmer to the shop owners. That's a big deal. This will kick Shop Monkey in the nuts. This will kick all data and Mitchell one on the nuts. What's my goal for the future? My goal for the future, two things. There's two type of customers out there. 
we were able to help all the customers that like their data to be on their own computer we will continue to help those and i was one of them and i understand why and but we are welcoming the new customers who wants more options and more flexibility and have their data on the cloud to have more options and tablets and sending data and authorizing through email in the nice way that everybody's asking me about mark why can't you make uh, me uh, when when I send that uh, when I send an authorization through email, why don't you make a button there and click on authorize? Now, I can't do that unless you have a cloud version. Your your data is on the, on your local database. Uh, you're on your computer. If I send a, if I send an email to a customer with a button, it needs to go to the cloud. But for the cloud customers who are coming up, and remember, if you if you're uh, if you're uh, if you're a non-cloud uh, customer and you want to upgrade to cloud, you you will get the three hundred fifty dollars credit. That's for sure. I mean, that's whether I bring investors or not. I don't care. I wish I am bringing investors at the end of the year. You will will give you credit for that, so that way you don't feel like, oh, I paid three hundred fifty dollars and now I gotta pay monthly subscription for the cloud for the cloud. No, we don't want that. Second thing, you don't have to do anything. If you want to keep your database on the, on your own computer, you can. You will receive the fifth generation. My goal is to handle everybody. C Shop Monkey, their goal is not they don't they're not interested in the customers that don't want their database on the cloud. They can't afford it anyway. The only reason I can't afford it is because I created this by myself. There's no employees yet. No employees. That's just amazing. What I've done so far is really amazing. My skills is reaching a high, high level. Hopefully pretty soon a spiritual level. And this is a product that's gonna make everybody's life easy, simple, beautiful. I'm super excited for you guys. I wish I, had, I didn't have this kind of product at my shop. I mean, I know my shop will receive the update, so everybody's gonna receive the update. Anyway, I gotta go. I gotta get back to work. I've been working 15 hours a day since September 12. This is the hard work. It's not like me snapping my finger and this happens. It's really hard. But it's rewarding at the same time. Anyway, I appreciate you guys until uh, September. I don't know. I'm sure I'll make another video before then. Uh, talking about installation and how you're gonna switch. We'll talk about that later. But I just wanted to make, give you an update and a timeline. Sip uh, November 24th the first upgrade doesn't mean that we're you know, not gonna uh, like release upgrades after uh, for the fifth generation of course we will the first upgrade uh, which is the switch from the fourth generation to fifth generation is gonna be November uh, 24th and you know because of the pandemic and all what happened I really made up for this time that was wasted uh, for VIP shop management I put in the work put in the hours uh, the effort to make up because we were supposed to be at this point but the, the pandemic and all what happened in the country and it just kind of pushed us back but I made up for it not just in, in a short period of time I not just made up to it I destroyed all the possibilities really I appreciate everybody keep keep up for all the good people out there I really appreciate you keep on the support I'll never let you down you will never be let down. You can go home and sleep and knowing that you have a great software, a great company, you can depend on it. And you know, we will make money, but we want to serve first and make money. Not just like everyone else, they want to make money and then serve. We're the opposite. Um, I know our service is like a little bit hectic lately because of uh, uh, t tech support. I've been really busy, but you gotta understand you. I appreciate your patience, what's going on here. I'm really busy. I'm doing the impossible, literally between uh, handling tech support, um, creating, recreating the invoice, the, the the shop management system, and keeping everybody happy. I think I've been doing a good job. Always email me. I don't want you. If I didn't reply, email me again. You gotta understand. I'm really busy. Don't take things uh, to to a heart. Well, you know, Mark is ignoring you. I, I treat everybody equally. Uh, every customer is important to me. Any VIP customer is important to me. Every VIP customer will always be important to me. Whether you subscribe uh, to a monthly subscription and you're not, it doesn't matter. You're an asset to VIP shop management. 
our goal is to take over uh, in a country and be the number one VIP shop management. We cannot be become the number one if we're gonna get rid of this customer. Don't care about this customer. It doesn't work this way. The only way for us to become a number one, we need to take care of every customer that becomes a VIP. But to become a VIP, you gotta be a VIP. I tell that to everybody. Don't come back. Don't come and buy that software and thinking you're gonna make play some tricks on me or on the company and saying, "Hey, I'll buy it, but if you add this, don't play these games." Or literally, the company doesn't need you. It's either you play with our rules, we appreciate it, or you go find someone else. We're not forcing you to be part of our shop management and in, in in a way, we're not forcing you. It's you're free. We, there is no forcing in anything. At any moment, somebody doesn't like VIP shop management, you are free to go. No, you're not in a contract. Uh, you pay $350. People are paying $350 a month, so you have nothing to lose. Your data, you can download it, transfer it. We're not even going to lock you out. So you're always free to go. But why would you go? You'll be an idiot if you leave VIP shop management, especially with the new duration that's coming up. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. Until next time, thanks for watching.